going a little off last time. Happy Tuesday, Floss Tube. Hello, crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caroline. Welcome back to another Floss Tube video here on Off the Grid Needle Arts. Uh, it is currently 6.25 p.m. And I wanted to make sure that I posted a video today because today starts week three of our coffee stitch along. The heartstring samplery coffee, C is for coffee stitch along. I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do was take care of the giveaway that I had from last week. I had, uh, I think it was 11, let me count, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven skeins of DMC 3808. This beautiful color. I love this color. I was going to be stitching the Death by Cross Stitch with this floss and then um, <laughs> I abandoned the project. Doesn't mean I don't love the floss, but I abandoned the project and so this floss needs to go to a new home. I used the YouTube random comment generator picker and the comment that came up, there, so there were 89 unique comments Thank you for thank you so much for all of your great comments uh, on last week's video. Really, um, I love I love getting your comments. It's really really nice. Yes, that's Luna. I know some of you. Every time I say Luna's snoring, you say you can't hear her. But oh, we woke her up. Big stretch. And an adjustment. There we go. So yes, as you can see, Luna is never far away, which is actually quite fun. I know this camera, I need a new tripod. This tripod is pathetic. Anyway, it works. Uh, so uh, the comment that won, the winner, congratulations, your name is Joyce. That's the only information I have. Your name is Joyce. So I'm going to actually read your comment so that you know you're the Joyce that I'm talking about. Love your new stitchy spot. Perfect by the window. It really is. Maybe a bed for Luna would round out the decor. Or is she like my sweet Sadie and doesn't like dog beds? That 3808 is a gorgeous blue. Agreed. It is a gorgeous blue. So yeah, that's Luna's bed that is... Um, behind my my sewing spot in the in the room right next door she it's a massive bed and it's really easy to drag from room to room so she loves her bed and um, frequently at this time of day she's just had her dinner she's ready for uh, a very long snooze before we get to go home so 308 3808 congratulations Joyce if you could please email me caroline at evertote.ca I will pop that in the mail for you along with it's going to travel inside um, one of our notion pouches for you okay so I don't have a giveaway for today I I was going to and then the day just slipped away from me today I had to take my son to the dentist uh, this morning that took a that took a little while he had to have four baby teeth extracted and actually it ended up being four and a half because he it turned out he had a half broken baby tooth that was still sort of stuck in there so four and a half baby teeth later and many dollars <laughs> yeah many many dollars um, he is now missing four and a half of his very last baby teeth so he's 14 years old yeah and they were we we've been you know consulting every time we go to the dentist you know anyways you don't need to hear all of that long story short it's why I don't have a giveaway for today because uh, the day just got away from me so let's talk about the coffee stitch along this is the heartstring samplery samplery C is for coffee and I last week was week two and there's week one and week two all finished so i'll just bring this i think you can see it pretty clearly i know i need to get uh, there we go let's try this Isn't 
Isn't it pretty? Love the colors. So this is a 32 count linen by Roxy Flosco called Snickerdoodle. Snickerdoodle is likely a, an unrepeatable linen um, that we have. We I still have a fair bit of stock, but once it's gone, um, we won't have any more. <sighs> long story. It's a long it, and actually a really interesting story. Uh, but anyways, this linen is a product of humidity and a dye recipe. And it didn't turn out to be what the recipe was supposed to be when you added humidity to it, this is what happened last summer. And it, it was almost like magical because this linen is really beautiful, but it's all we, it's all I have. Uh, anyways, so 32 count sticker doodle, two strands of floss, two over two, and I'm using a Roxy Floss Co. conversion that I put together. So week one, this was week one, this was week two, and now week three, we are going to be stitching well, I'm going to be stitching. You can stitch. If you're joining me in the stitch along, there were no rules for this other than the fact that I wanted to be completed mine within four weeks. So the coffee cup is next. Coffee cup is next. Now, uh, Beth, Beth twist. When I'm looking at the cover model, it's very clear that the floss that she used was, um, you know, in the, and you can tell in the called for colors, it's an over dyed floss. Um, what were they? Either, uh, oh, I can't, where is it? Weeks Dye Works or Gentle Arts. She clearly stitched her, her cup and this, and the coffee inside. She clearly stitched it in a vertical fashion and not horizontal stripes. She stitched them vertically, and that's what I'm going to be doing as well. Uh, yeah. My my flo my skein of, of espresso floss isn't with the rest of my pack. I'm not quite sure what happened to it. I have a funny feeling I left it downstairs after I recorded um, one of these uh, stitch along videos downstairs. So I need to hunt around for it. I'm sure I can find a skein of espresso in this building somewhere. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's what's on deck for this week. I have been posting my daily progress of the coffee stitch along over on my Instagram page, which is at ever totes and, um, in the stories, in the story section, not in the regular posts, but in the story section. And then, um, when I've completed a day, I also add it into a highlight reel because I, I love seeing that progression day to day to day of watching the piece come to life, even though it's just a small one. It's, uh, it's really fun. I'm enjoying it. So today is the start of week three, two weeks to go, and we're going to have a completed project because March 14th, I am going to be starting the Friendship Sampler by my friend Ellen of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. That's going to be my next stitch along. So I want to make sure that this one is done so that I can get that one started. Okay, so next up, I started... Um, a stitch along that I really was, I, I should have started it at the beginning of February. Uh, I just, you know, I, I didn't get to it until later in the month, but I wanted to make sure that I started it in the month of February in, um, in order to celebrate uh, Black History Month. So I, this is a design by Nuri of Shaded Stitchery. And this, uh, this piece is called Data Portraits in Paris 1900, and it is based upon infographs by William Dubois. Let me, um, let me read you Nuri's uh, paragraph from her chart. At the 1900 Paris World Fair, a set of hand-drawn charts, graphs, and diagrams debuted that captured the African-American experience for the world's eyes. These bold, eye-catching infographics were the brainchild of W.E.B. Dubois, noted American sociologist, historian, civil rights activist, pan-Africanist, author, and editor. This stitch, 
features a collage of my interpretations of the infographics paying homage to his work and the sheer fact that this data exists. So if you're not following Nuri, Shaded Stitchery, I know I've mentioned her before, but if you're not following her on Instagram, I cannot highly recommend it enough. Um, so Nuri started this project last year and she, she last February, uh, 2022, during the month of February, she took us along on her journey of designing this, this, this piece. And every day she added a new, um, a new interpretation of a different infographic from Dubois. And she also included the, the relevance of that infographic along, alongside her interpretation of it every single day. And then, um, so she, she created this piece and then this year she turned it into a stitch along, a daily stitch along that started on February 1st. And again, every day included the, um, the image of the daily stitch, the image of the infographic from Dubois, and then again, the, the relevance of that infographic with, with detailed information, um, in the, in the description of the Instagram post. So you really want to check out her posts because it's, it's, it's far, far too, um, there, there's just so much packed into these daily posts by Nuri. So much love and care and work went into this project that, uh, you know, being able to watch it come to life every day. Now, she also did something really cool. This year, she, she did a secondary version this year where she created an entirely new version of her project using specialty stitches and beads and buttons and like, accoutrement to you to for lack of a better word and it was it was just like watching a little bit of magic take place over over the last month so um you know watching that throughout the month of february again once again this year has been has been such a highlight of the month for me so uh, a huge thank you to nuri for sharing her work and um if if you uh you know if you haven't checked it out head over to it is shadedstitchery.gumroad.com and you know even if you even if this is not a piece that you would stitch i think that purchasing it from nuri is a valuable contribution towards supporting this kind of work that that is going on um <laughs> meaningful cross stitch i mean talk about talk about adding so much meaning to, and a piece of art. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Anyways, uh, I've got almost up to the end of day four. So here's my, here's my start. The colors, the, co I've been using, um, floss just from my stash. You know, I've been trying to match colors as best as I can from Nuri's photos. Her photos are fantastic. I mean, her, the sharpness and clarity in her photographs are really, really good. So I've just been sort of choosing floss. Half like, like I, I needed a green and I needed a pink and a yellow. I don't even know what this is. I found it in my stash. I'm like, that pink will work. So I have no idea what they are. I'm using, it's a, it's a real mix of Roxy Floss Co. leftovers. Um, the red, we were done with the red from the C is for coffee design and it was a perfect red for this chart. So I'm using up the rest of the skein in Nuri's design. So here's, here's where I'm at. This was day one. This was day two. This was day three. And I'm partly, I just need to finish day four. Um, and then clearly, uh, the remainder of the chart and, and yeah, like once again, please go to Nuri's Instagram page and, and if you would like to know more information about each of these, these daily interpretations, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's really fantastic. I hope that the, the brightness, I love it. I just, I love it so much meaningful and beautiful. Thank you, Nuri. 
um, fabric. It was a leftover piece that I had from, uh, it's the same fabric I'm using for my hibernation day, heartstring samplery hibernation day. It's a, it's a paler uh, yard of 28 count Panettone. Panettone is usually a little bit darker than this. Uh, so, but anyway, so it was just a leftover um, bit in my stash that I had. Fantastic. Uh, okay, so I told you last week that I was tidying up. <laughs> And I may have admitted that I was, you know, shiny nickel, a little bit squirreled by a few of the things I found. So, indeed, look what I found. Remember this guy? If you've been here for a while, you'll remember this one. I had completely forgotten about this one. Ink Circles Damask Square. Completely forgotten about it. And when I pulled it out, it was like... This is almost done. Why, why is this not done? And this is so beautiful. And I, I had just, it was like finding an old best friend, you know, and I, I'm so pleased that I found it because now it's back out in the forefront and it's just, it's, it's not huge. So just a little bit more work because look at, look at how much I have done. Which way do I want to show it to you? It doesn't matter, right? Ta-da! Look at that! Right? Isn't it? It's so beautiful. So this is a really interesting project, actually. So, of course, I, I went completely rogue. Um, the original is white, and I went with blue. And I'm also using... I have no idea where to get these, because I don't... Uh, I bought this years and years ago from my local needle workshop. It was just a pre-finished fabric square and it's the hem stitching's all done. It was already pre, you can see, it's already pre-finished into a, you know, a, it, a, it's an FFO already. I just have to finish the stitching and it's done. So look at that, right? So I've got my floss. I was stitching this with a beautiful, beautiful dinky dye silk. And it's color 93 Pacific Ocean. Right? Completely forgotten about it. And it was like magic finding it again. And I thought, oh yeah, you have to finish that. So it's now out. I don't foresee moving this room yet again, so I think now that I can, I have all my things in one place, I'll have a better, you know, system to keep track of stuff. I, I can't tell you, my stuff, my personal stash, there's a reason that the tagline for this video is from the stash pile, because I have been a stitcher for a very long time. I have been a stash acquirer for a very long time. I've been stitching since I was a teenager. And um, I, have, I was very fortunate to have an excellent local needle workshop from the time I was in my mid-twenties. And I'm now almost 50. So I've been collecting stash for a few years now. Um, and that said stash has been moved. That stash pile has been moved several times. You know, I, I had space upstairs, then I had space downstairs, and then it was moved back upstairs, and then we moved everything. And, you know, we've had a couple of house moves in there. Then we moved here. My, my stuff moved here. I didn't move here. I do go home every night, believe it or not. Though, this is pretty nice. I, I'm not gonna lie. I do like hanging out here, so... I might spend a couple extra minutes here at the end of the day before I go home, but not too many. So now I feel like my stuff has a home. My stash has come home and I'm unpacking it all and I'm, I'm enjoying my things and it's, uh, it, yeah, it feels pretty good. Oh, hey, Taryn. Where was I? I got interrupted. Um, I was telling you about... Oh, my stash coming home and just being able to have everything have a home and feel like, I don't know, it's a pretty nice feeling. So not going to lie. So now I know where this is. It's out. I would like to have it finished and I'm sure I can find a home for it. Okay. 
So I, I showed you my coffee stitch along. I, I have had a new start and I have another one planned. Uh, <laughs> I love snow. I really love snow every year. I, I just, I look forward to it every year. I love winter period. This year has been a little tough. I'm not going to lie. My love affair with snow is not broken, but the last week has tested my endurance with winter because we have had a freezing rain. I know lots of you have had extreme winter weather. And in fact, in some parts of the States, um, extreme heat, like it's just been, it's been really, uh, quite something the last, the last little while. So we didn't, I don't feel like we really got a proper winter this year. We didn't really get very much snow at all. And when we would get snow, it would be a huge storm, massive amounts of snow, and then lots of rain and it would just wash it all away. Fortunately, we did get, um, in London at least, we had a white Christmas this year. It's London, Ontario, Canada. Sometimes when I forget to say that, I have people think that I'm talking about the other London, even though I don't have a British accent at all. But anyways, um, yeah, these ice storms have just, I'm telling you, like, it's not been fun at all. And I've really had a pull for spring colors, spring stitching, and just new starts, right? I've been gravitating towards our spring bags in the shop, the fabrics, the colors, the, the projects. So I have a new plan, I have a new start planned. So my hope is to start it today or tomorrow morning and share my start over on um, another floss tube over on the other channel, the Evertotes channel. Carrie and I are going to record a floss tube on Thursday morning. Uh, that is the YouTube channel is called Evertote Notes from the Workshop. And Carrie and I try to record every two weeks, but it's actually been a month since the last time we recorded together. So, Dorothy's vase. This piece um, was designed by my friend Ellen, Maximum Cross Stitch, and we brought it into the shop last month I think in January is when we released it and uh, this chart I'm gonna read you Ellen's uh, let me show you the back first see this so keep that that stitching in mind okay and that's Wayne that's Ellen's cat Wayne she includes a different photo of Wayne on all of her charts so that piece right there okay this design is a loose adaptation of a piece of embroidery done by my grandmother Dorothy Reed. I'm not sure when she would have stitched it, but likely in the 1930s. The original is done in cross stitch, but oriented like a T instead of an X. It appears as she used three strands of floss on linen. I loved the colors she used and the black vase with tassels, but I wanted to add a little bit more detail. So we actually, um, someone in the shop purchased this the other day and um, Daniel was helping get the orders ready today and he pulled the floss together and he brought it up to me and I've seen the floss together before and I've seen Ellen's chart before but uh, there was just something that hit me that struck me about it today because of all of the ice and cold and there's no snow and it's ugly outside and gray and we've hardly had any sun and I'm I'm just I don't know. I, I didn't get my proper winter and I'm feeling a little grouchy about it, frankly. And then he brought these colors and he said, you have to see this pack. And I said, yeah, I've seen it. He said, no, no, look at these colors. These colors are spring. It's right. They just feel really spring like to me. The greens, they're really fresh and it's not a lot of pink. It's not a lot of I, I can't explain it. It's just, it's a beautiful palette of fresh springy colors. Is that going to focus? Let's see. It's trying to catch, catch my face there. There. I love it. So, um, yeah, this is going to be my, this is going to be a new start. 
just because, because I am, I am mad. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I feel like I'm I'm owed a new start. Isn't that funny? I'm not owed anything. You can stitch whatever you want whenever you want. There aren't any rules. And I refuse to feel bad about new starts and projects in my stash because, well, I think you should stitch what you want when you want. So that is going to be on the docket. Maybe not tonight. I need to do my, my coffee stitch along stitching still for tonight, but maybe tomorrow morning with a cup of coffee. Work on my coffee stitch along and then put in my first turn of floss into this tomorrow morning. So I did, I mentioned I had another new start. I, I don't have it here with me. It's at home on my, on my floor frame. I started the uh, Quaint Rose Needle Arts Spring. <laughs> I think it's self-explanatory. Um, I've wanted to stitch that since last year. I don't have a shop model here in the shop. Um, when Macy stitched hers for our collaboration last year, um, she stitched the model and she has the model that, and she used that for the photographs, for the, for the picture, for the, for the chart. So I don't have a shop model here and I adore the colors in it and the pigs are just so sweet. I'll put up a screen, uh, a photo here of the, of the chart so you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I, I start, I had a piece of 46 count porcelain kicking around because it had a, it had a mark on it. So I had an eighth of fabric. I can't, I can't send out, you know, flawed fabric. So it was a piece of fabric that had a bit of a flaw in it but it's mostly gonna be covered by stitching anyways. And it's 46 count. It's not a huge design, but it's there's quite a lot of color changes, but there's a beautiful border and the pigs are so cute and it's so fresh and so springy. It's 46 count, so it's teeny, teeny, tiny and so pretty. So I can't wait to share it with you. I'll, I'm will i gonna show it on Thursday on that floss tube video, but I'll bring it back next Tuesday because I hope to actually have some time this weekend to work on it. Other than that, um, I did, just for uh, proof, proof of life, my biscuit sock, a uh, couple of rows here and there. I know you can't really tell, but my gusset is, my, my gusset is half done. I always do a really long heel, uh, I always do a really long gusset heel flap because I like I need that extra space over my the saddle of my foot because I have a very high arch so my my um my gusset decreases always take forever because I have to do like 22 of them 21 or 22 of them and uh yeah, they take they take quite a long time but anyway I love it this is a yarn by polka dot creek lovely Canadian dyer out from in Alberta, Canada. And yeah, I, I mentioned this last week. I've been showing this yarn for two years. It's time to finish the socks. The other one is done. Do you want to see it on my fancy sock blocker? Let me, because now I know where my sock blockers are. They have a home here. Hang on. I'm going to show you this first. Allison, look it. So this is this was stitched from um, Allison. I'm not going to tell you her last name because, well, she might not want me to. And she wrote on the back here, may your stash always be big enough to allow you to hide from the world for a little peace and tranquility. Allison stitched this for me a couple of years ago and she mailed it to me because I had mentioned something in a floss tube video about that exact sentiment, how sometimes it's just nice to feel like a bit of an ostrich and stick your head in your stash and just hide away. She also said it was, when she made it, it was for my, um, I had just cleaned out my studio space. My studio space was like a spare bedroom in our house on the upstairs floor of our house. And um, I had turned it into a workroom, a workshop room for my business. And um, she made this for me and she said that I had to call, I should call it my Wethda which was Welsh for workroom. So Allison, I wanted you to know that my ostrich has made it home <laughs> to my new Wetta here at the workshop. 
and I love it. So thank you. Thank you again, two years later, because uh, yeah, these things, you know, they're, me they're so meaningful. So let me show it to you up close. I'm waving it around here and I didn't show it to you, did I? So she stitched the ostrich and look, the ostrich is, oops, that was my sock blocker, sorry. The ostrich is sticking its head into a stash pile of crafty goodness. Isn't that clever? And just so sweet. I love that she wrote on the back of it. And that is actually why I don't plan to frame it. I, I like it the way it is um, so that I can actually, so that I can see the back of it and read it. Love that. All right. Sorry for the huge crashing noise. Let me find my sock blocker again here. Sock blockers, I'm often asked, you know, are they useful things to have? You know, do you actually block your socks on them so that they fit better? Um, no, I don't. I, I block my socks on my feet after I wash them. These are, for me, they are purely to make the socks look pretty when I show them to you. So that's sock number one. This is the Biscuit Sock by Lorraine Ashley of LNS Crafts. There will be a link in the description box below. I have a playlist on this channel um, if you have always wanted to learn how to knit. Um, if you look in the playlist, se playlist section, um, I, know, I know for a fact because I've been tagged on Instagram, I've had people leave me comments, um, that they have actually learned how to knit using these tutorial videos that I've done. Now, these were from a few years ago, like 2018. And you know, I, I'm, I'm an amateur videographer, et cetera, et cetera. So the music might be a little loud at the beginning. Maybe, uh, you know, I hope my camera angles are clear enough. I think they are. Um, so it takes you all the way from learning how to knit a dishcloth to knitting a mitten, no, the hat is next. So it's a dishcloth, a hat, a mitten, and then a sock. So if you've always wanted to learn how to knit, I cannot recommend it highly enough. I absolutely love knitting. I love everything about knitting. I don't knit a lot, but when I do knit, it's really, it's a comfort. It's a true comfort. We have different crafts for different things, right? So if you've always wanted to learn how to knit, give it a go. Don't be afraid, don't be nervous. Practice, practice, practice. Really, that's all it is. I should, I should, you know, show you my very first sock that I ever made. It's massive, it, n it would never fit me in a million years. It would fit a giant, it's huge. Um, but, you know, all you do is you just keep trying. It'll either fit someone or you can unravel it and knit it all over again. And let's face it, you start off with a dishcloth and dishcloths certainly do not have to be perfect to be a worthy, addition to a kitchen. So yeah, gusset decreases are half done. I'm going to keep working on this until it's done because I have some self-striping sock yarn from Timber Yarns waiting in a project bag that is just calling my name because it's, um, it is a hot, bright, pink, stripey goodness spring day in a bag. So I need to, I need to finish this one so that I can cast those on. So that's my sock. These are going to be for Sarah because, uh, sad trombone. This one did not fit me, but it fits Sarah. So they're for her and she really likes them too. So it's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing actually. Okay. I think, I think that's it. I think I've shared everything. Um, just a little heads up, if you are attending the Stitch North Cross Stitch Retreat um, that's being hosted by me uh, here in Ontario, the retreat is happening in Brampton, Ontario, the last weekend of April. We have two weekends fully booked, um, but again, we do still have people canceling um, so who, who are unable to come. So if you're still interested in coming, we have a little wait list. Um, most of the people are getting in off the wait list. So um, don't think that it's too late. You can uh, email Hannah. Hannah is H-A-N-N-A-H at evertote.ca. And um, sometimes emails are a little funny. You, if you're waiting for an email from us, um, or if you're signed up for our newsletter, 
which I'm, you're gonna wanna be signed up for our newsletter, uh, especially if you're a Stitch North attendee. You're going to wanna make sure that we at Evertote are in your contacts list, in your address book for your email, because we find that so many of our emails just get shunted directly into your spam filter. Um, Hearthside Craftworks, perfect example. Uh, we had hundreds of people on a wait list for um, our stands, and we sent out we sent out numerous emails regarding you know wait times and we're coming up and things are ready to go, and we probably we did not hear back from 75 to 100 people, and and you know it's you didn't have to respond to us, but it was more a question of afterwards we had a couple of customers contact us and say I haven't heard anything what's up it's like we've been sending out emails you know I'm sorry um, and they're just going into spam filters so if you want to be in contact with us if you want to hear from us please make sure we're in your contacts list you just have to add us to your address book and that way emails from us will get through to you we have a very hard time sending links to anything if you ask us questions and we want to send you a link about something if we're not in your address book, chances are very good. It's just going to go directly into spam. It's a little bit frustrating actually, because you know um, we do try really hard to, to answer. Um, and, and sometimes email just misbehaves and we either don't get it or it gets lost in the, in the, in the ether. So if you haven't heard from us um, and you're waiting for an answer, try us again and make sure that we're in your address book. Where was I going with that? Stitch North, right, Stitch North. Uh, we are tomorrow releasing the uh, pre-orders for the Stitch North kit, the Stitch North Evertote kit. So um, this is going to be, it's going to be listed live on the shop, but it is, at the moment, it's really for Stitch North attendees to purchase. So I'm going to have a video up tomorrow over on the Evertote Workshop channel, but it's actually going to be a private video. So we're going to be emailing out a link to that video. It's gonna give you all of the details about the kit, the, um, the amazing uh, collaboration that we are working on, all of the details about um, the bag, the pattern, the floss, everything that we can tell you we're going to tell you in the video well it's actually i'm going to tell you i'm going to tell carrie about it because it's kind of um it's an interest it's 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 just so much fun i can't wait to tell you about it i'm not going to spend more time talking about it here anyways because it's just for at the moment it's just for stitch north attendees and then we're going to release it generally in may after the the stitch north retreats have taken place so if you're watching this and you're not coming to Stitch North, we have something very exciting to share with you in May. Coming down, coming down the laneway. Um, I think that's it. I do really think that's it. It is now 10 after seven. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack up, I'm gonna head home and I will edit this video and upload it at home tonight. So um, yeah, I left my door open today, so I know. You, remember I showed you the mess last week? The mess on the floor, all of the boxes that I pulled out of here that were on the floor in there have now been unpacked and put away and sorted. Um, the stuff that's on the top of the desk there, that's just my everyday work. I, you know, I'm a busy, busy person with lots of things happening. And so that's just my work surface. If you're waiting for cherry cobbler, if you're waiting for Roxy Flosco cherry cobbler, there it is was just put through the put through the hot roller this afternoon so we're going to be um uh cutting and surging and shipping that uh tomorrow so i love my job that's that's all there is to it love my job okay um yeah i literally i'm quite certain could talk for another half an hour easily but i'll get going have a great night, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Happy stitching. And I'll be seeing you later this week and next Tuesday for another floss tube from me. Take care, everybody. Happy stitching. <laughs>